Hello and welcome back to Shapes.io Alpha. Today I'll be going over the recent updates to the game, which include some bug fixes, new features, and a new component. As usual, if you want to gain access to the alpha, you have to join the Discord. The link to that will be in the description. So let's hop right in. The first change you might have noticed on the main menu is that you can now change the name of each game save. Previously, it only showed the level, but now you can change the name to whatever you want, as you can see here. So for the updates, I'll be reading off a list and then I'll show you what they mean. So the first thing is that you can now rotate levers. So what that means is that previously, you could only place them up. The only way to rotate them was to cut them and then rotate. But now you can rotate, you can rotate them like normally. The next thing is that pin shapes are now highlighted and shown first in the statistics dialog. So as you see, we have the blueprint shape and the free play shape, which are automatically pinned. And if we go to statistics, yeah, we have those. So these are pinned and these are first in the stored and probably will be first in produced too. Next is added a new setting to allow deleting while placing buildings. So if we go to settings and in advanced, there is clear cursor on right click. So that's automatically enabled and it clears the cursor whenever you right click when you have a building selected. If disabled, you can delete buildings by right clicking while placing a building. So if we have buildings and it's still selected and we didn't have that on, if we right clicked, that would delete. So for the next thing, fix rendering bugs where, where items overlapped a belt. So that's a, just a bug fix. New quad painter. The quad painter now works differently. It has four pins and it will only paint the shape of an, on the quadrants where the value is true. So this is actually a really big feature. So the quad painter now has wire inputs. So how they work is that whichever one, if this is in, if it's inputting a one or true or anything, then it will paint that corner. And if it's zero, it will let it pass and stay uncolored. This is actually really good. It gives a good use for quad painters in uh, anything machines. So if we get a shape and the one thing I don't like about this is that you actually need. So if we take these, you actually uh, need to have each or you need to have at least one of them wired for the quad painter to work. So if we build this, you see by default, it doesn't work because as it shows, you need a wire. So for the quad painter, you can see which corner it's painting by this little arrow on this symbol. So let's say we have a button, right? And if we just want the top right corner painted, we wire this up and then click the button. Now it's just the top right. And so that's pretty much how they work. And a new major change with uh, wires is that if you had a color wire let's, or a shape wire, that is now true. Meaning, so previously, log, if you had a shape wire into a logic gate, say we have an AND gate, right? And we hook this up. Previously, this wouldn't work. The shape or color wires would count as false, but now they count as true. So if we turn this on, you see that it works. The way to make them true previously was to use a NOT gate. So this was false and that would turn to one. I'm pretty, wait, no, that would turn to zero. And then you have to double knot it. And that's the only way you could change a shape or color to a one or zero. But now these are shapes and color wires are just true. So that's pretty convenient. Let's see, next on the list, belt reader, yes. Displays the current throughput and outputs the last item on the wire layer. So the belt reader, this item right here. So let's say we got some green paint. So this isn't a full belt. If we, uh, if we trash this, you can see this isn't a full belt and it shows the speed. So three extractors, it's still climbing. So three extractors do about nine, it is, seems to be going around like 17 or 18. If we go to the wire layer, so this will output if the, if it just reads anything. And this shows what the last thing. So if we disconnect this, you see this stops outputting. 
but this stays on it. That just shows the last thing the belt reader read. All right, next. All shapes and colors are now truthy. Yeah, I mentioned that. For example, an and with two shapes is now a one. Exactly, so as I showed earlier, uh, yes, shapes, so if we got like a square, yeah, so that's now truthy. We could just hook this up to an OR gate, and that produces a 1. This is the easiest way to convert a shape to a 1, by the way. Now, before that didn't work, because OR gates couldn't read it, because they weren't truthy, meaning they would not give a 1. All right, next on the list. All buildings and belts now work at advertised speeds. So, before the uh, game was actually too fast, for buildings to handle, so you actually need to place one more building if you want to keep up at max speed. But now, I guess that's fixed, and now belts should actually go at 30 items a second. So that's quite nice. Next, added setting to show chunk borders. So if we go to settings, let's see, is it user interface maybe? Uh, no. It's probably in advanced then. Display chunk borders. Oops. Uh, this one. Let's see. So now this displays chunk borders. If you zoom out, you can see each chunk. Perfect. Next on the list. Color items are now shown bigger on wires. So that's just a small uh, UI change. So if we get like a color wire. So now a bit bigger, I guess. Okay. The virtual comparator can now compare all items. So this is another big change. So if we have the virtual comparator, before this only worked for shapes. So if you had two shape inputs, uh, oops. Well, obviously this will work because it's the same thing. But yeah, this would just compare, but now it works with colors too. And Boolean, meaning if it's both one or zero, Outputs. Interesting. Next. Wires and levers now store their state, so it should be persistent now. Okay? So what this means is that previously in the game, if you had a button or if you had anything, maybe a wire loop, so if we had something like this, uh, oops, this, so this would normally loop, right? But once you exited the game, the wires would all default to zero or empty. But now, if you exit, this should work. So that's nice. Second last on the list. Tier 2 tunnels now have a range of 9, effectively crossing 8 tiles. So yeah, so tier, before tier 2 tunnels were 8 tiles. So before, they were like this, and now they're like that. Not too big of a change, but one nonetheless and finally the last change now this actually wasn't mentioned in the discord but uh he tobes mentioned that he didn't like announce it but he did say that he would changed it so the last change is that not gates will now output empty when inputting a conflict signal so this means so if you know what a conflict signal is it's when uh, if you have two different uh inputs onto a wire it conflicts and now before, a knock gate would just output a 1, but now it actually outputs empty. So, a knock gate outputting empty. Pretty interesting. I'm pretty sure it's the only gate that can actually, like, that actually does something with conflict signals. All the other gates just... Actually, the other gates... Hmm, maybe they just normally output empty. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, this... Do all the gates... I guess all the gates output empty. Let's test this. Uh, yeah, so if a conflicting signal is, inter is uh, inputted into a gate, it automatically becomes empty. Interesting. So, with all these updates, I'm sure there's more to come soon. But uh, another thing I want to talk about is that since these updates, some of these updates will actually uh, can actually like break some builds, right? So, that's one of the reasons I have been delaying my uploads, is because I know the game's been getting updates, and I'm sure it will get more updates really soon, and those might affect gameplay, and 
some builds. Like the fact that uh, shapes and colors are now truthy when they, they count as a one. That uh, affected some of my decoding circuits and uh, also conflicts now, conflicts with knots are empty. That also affected because before they were one and now they're empty, which is kind of like zero. So that changed some stuff too. So yeah, I'll be holding off on my uploads for some of the projects until I know that the updates have settled and yeah. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If more big updates come, I may post a second follow-up video showing those. The reason I posted this video is just to tell you why I haven't been uploading recently, just because these big updates. So uh, that's all for today. Remember the alpha, you can find at the Discord, the link to that is in the description. Subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.